Welcome back to Vietnam. Look what I found. You're the man in all his glory. Who was that guy? That brother was the best damn soldier that ever lived. We bury it. Made our own, we come back and collect. Um, I want to congratulate you uh, right off the bat on your screenplay Oscar win, sir. Uh, such a thank you very much. A happy day for for everybody. It's the first win and fifth nomination for Spike Lee. You know, now I'm thrilled to see you with Netflix, which is backing a lot of really important storytellers from uh, Mr. Scorsese to Mr. Coran yourself right now too. I'm curious if you think it's time for the Academy to start loosening their grip and, and paying attention to Oscar-worthy stories on streaming platforms. Well, you mean. Roma got a ton of nominations. Mm -hmm. So did my brother, my my mentor, Martin Scorsese, who last. But whether you know, the thing is, they haven't gotten a best picture yet. So, but I do think that uh, with many people seeing their films screen now because they can't go to movie theater, maybe you know some minds will 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 change. I would love to get your reactions when you found out that you would also get to play your characters um, in the flashbacks, something that's normally assigned to younger uh, younger actors, but it gave you a chance to sort of play with those aspects of them. I loved it, man, because I needed to get in shape. <laughs> <laughs> I even lost weight. <laughs> Very artistic, you know, endeavor in the sense of like, it's not, don't, don't spend so much time on trying to look younger or with makeup and all that kind of stuff or hiring new people to look like this, you know, the younger self of these other people. But it was great for us because of we were it was almost like it was a dream sequence and we were going back in time. And and I'm going to steal what Clark said earlier, but it was also suffering from that PTSD. It is something that you feel no matter what age you are. You did it at 18, but yet you know, 40, 40, 50 years later, you're still feeling that same thing. So why not represent that as the character you are at that age? It felt right. I mean, he didn't actually, we didn't actually have that specific conversation, but when I read the script, it was clearly uh, written that in the flashback scenes, we would be, the four of us would be the, the age that we are now. And what's interesting about that um, conceit um, is that I didn't miss a beat. It just felt right. In reading it, I didn't stop and say, huh, how's that going to work? It just felt right in terms of how the script was written, how the story was being, uh, how the story was unfolding. And certainly when we got to the point where we were filming those scenes, it absolutely felt right. You broken man. So are you blaming yourself? You don't even know. No! We've been dying for this country from the bad hit. We give this call to our people. I'd be a fool if I didn't credit uh, the work Terrence Blanchard did this time around. Terrence's score is amazing, isn't it? It is heroic. You, got, you can buy the soundtrack now. It's out. Oh, good. Excellent. Um, I just wanted Spotify, to... Spotify, iTunes, you can buy it. I just wanted to find out what you guys discussed heading into this collaboration, what you were trying to get from him. Terrence and I have been doing this so long, we don't have to speak a lot. I send the script as we're editing, as we're shooting the film, editing the film. We're sending him dailies. We, we developed the shorthand over these decades and uh, he goes away and comes back with these fantastic scores. And, and to add to what you said earlier, I'm so, I was so happy that Terrence got nominated, finally, for his score for Black Klansman. And I'm just curious if you if you each have been able to see your own performances with that final score backing it. Yeah, I absolutely have. And there's something about the the space of Vietnam and of, and of Thailand where we shot and the architecture of the film that feels almost operatic to me. That's and right. So to have uh, Blanchard come in and feel the space, you know, it amplified the space and it, 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 it does what a good score should do. It elevates everything mm -hmm. in the film, the acting, the cinematography, it complements everything. So yeah, it was, uh, I saw one scene without it and saw, saw the scene with it and it was like, oh, 
Yeah, yeah, we should. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is more confused than to be ordered into a war to die without the faintest idea of what's going on. I dedicate this next record to the Soul Brothers of the 1st Infantry Divisions. Be safe. So many of Spike's films uh, touch on themes and topics that are uh, still relevant today, more so even. And I know he doesn't do sequels and I would never really want him to, but I'm curious if there are old characters of his that you would love to just see him sort of pick up their story again and, and explore it to see where, where that character might go today. Either Rodney in Clockers or Paul in The Five Bloods. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's a very hard choice for me to make, but that's my decision and I'm sticking with it. Okay. I like to see what happens to Mookie. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were, we, no, where, are they still in Brooklyn? What happened? Like, where, how'd it go? You know? But yeah. Right. Hey! I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, Crooklyn? I mean, uh, the, that family? Eight, eight. From the 25th hour. Mm -hmm. Wow, there's so many. Yeah, there's yeah. Somebody from from uh, from from Malcolm X. I mean, uh, don't know, don't know. I screamed out loud, uh, Mr. Whitlock, when uh, Melvin dropped his signature. She. <laughs> <laughs> she. Has to make me believe that Melvin, you know, watched and loved The Wire as much as we all do. <laughs> I think I put it in, in an appropriate place, you know, because uh, Spike kept saying, when are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? And I said, look, I've got about two spots where I think, I think it's going to work, you know, uh, but we just got to wait. We just got to wait. Because, I mean, if, if you, if, if, if I, I've come to realize if you just put it anywhere, then it just becomes something else. But if you drop it where it needs to be dropped, I think it really works. And in this movie, I feel uh, when he asked me for the money, it's 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 pretty much what anybody would say. <laughs> <laughs> There's a scene toward the end of the film. It's not a spoiler in any sort of way, but it's a, a Black Lives Matter uh, chant, a scene. I'm curious. It's a, it's a kick in the gut based on the headlines of you know of the recent days. And I'm curious, was it a, a always part of the film or a I later? Was in the script? Was it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, we couldn't have gone back to Thailand to shoot it, you know, the last week, you know, that, uh, no, that was in, uh, that was in, that was in the script and, and it was shot accordingly. There's a lot of talk about shining a brighter light on up and coming black filmmakers. And I'm curious your perspective of what you think the industry can do to help more voices like that reach um, audiences, reach, reach larger audiences. Thank you for the question. I think it, it, the answer is very simple. We need to have black and brown people in those lofty positions of uh, the gatekeepers. These are people who have the, the green light votes. And very rarely do any of these studios, you know, companies have people of color in a position where they have a say, they have a vote, what gets made and what doesn't got, what doesn't get made. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I've been saying this for years and that has not happened yet. But that, that, if that, that happens, you're gonna see a change just like the Academy changed. Mm -hmm. When the motion picks, arts and science Academy, I always get the words mixed up out of order, I'm dyslectic. <laughs> but when they made that change to open up the ranks of the voting members, Right away, you saw the result of that with the with the nomination and wins, mm -hmm. and none of that stuff wouldn't happen if they not made those changes. Well, if Delroy doesn't have a nomination come next year, then the system, the game is a joke at this point. So hey, let's go back to 1989 and do the right thing. <laughs> really? We give this call to our people. In my line of work, I have to be very careful. And that means knowing exactly who I am in business with. <laughs>